on the line right now. KT, good morning. Good morning. All right, so let's talk about Afghanistan. The president told the Pentagon, get ready for a possible complete withdrawal from Afghanistan, and it could happen quick. What should we think about this? I think a couple of things. One, he's calling Karzai's bluff. Karzai is not helping us in our exit from Afghanistan. He's not going to sign this status of forces agreement. And so Obama's kind of calling his bluff, saying, okay, well, if you're not going to play with us, we're not going to play with you either. And I think, secondly, it really reflects what Obama wanted to do from day one, which is to get out of Afghanistan. And so he's now asking for the information quickly and and with an idea that we would maybe move quickly. Um, I'm all for it. I think we never should have surged in Afghanistan. As long as the conditions were what they were, um, where you couldn't possibly win as long as you had a corrupt and incompetent Karzai government, and as long as the safe havens um, and sanctuaries were in Pakistan where al-Qaeda and Taliban could regroup every night after we killed them during the day, it was a hopeless situation. So. To me, we never should have stuck around in Afghanistan to nation build. But is it a good idea, given all, given that we are there, yeah, that, we that, we, we are. That, that we jump out very quickly? We couldn't stabilize that country with 150,000 troops. Are we really going to stabilize that country with 10,000 troops? Huh. I mean, I, I don't see how they become anything but targets with big X's on their backs. Um, you, you know, Afghanistan, I've got to have somebody explain to me what's our strategic value there. I mean, I know we've bled and, and we've given them the best shot we possibly could give to be self-governing and independent and all that, but they're not taking it up. And I think the United States and I certainly and most Americans are sick and tired of propping up leaders who don't like us in countries that don't matter. Uh, KT, last week you gave us an amazing primer on Ukraine and, and, and how the U.S. and the West could actually fill a vacuum there so that Putin doesn't. Uh, that was actually early on before the amazing events over the weekend. And now you, you saw the changes that took place, and I was amazed at one of the first things the, the uh, protesters who seem to have now wrested control of the government, one of the first things they did was they climbed up to the top of the, the parliament building, the government building there, and removed the old Soviet star yeah. that had been there, which tells us exactly who these people were protesting in the streets. Uh, are we doing the right thing? Because it seems like we're not doing anything other than we're sitting back. Anything. We're saying, Vladimir Putin, you've got to fix this problem. Well, how is that a solution that's just going to... I don't think there is a good solution for Ukraine. Um, you know, you, you want to endorse and encourage and support people who want the same values we do, democracy, market capitalism. They want to look to the West. That's all great. But Ukraine has two massive problems. One, it is so heavily in debt, and there's nobody stepping up to bail them out. And two, they are completely dependent upon Russia for their energy. So they may want to turn to the West, but I think they've got a real problem with dealing with the East. Real fast, KT, is it realistic to split Ukraine West and East? Because I've heard a lot of people saying that, and they, they culturally well, they kind of want to do that because um, you know, for them, they want to have a united Ukraine. But at the end of the day, if the the Westerners, the guy who took the guys who took down the stars, start taking advantage and disadvantage of the Western or the eastern part of Ukraine, which is Russian, and particularly in the Crimea, which is where the Russian Black Sea Black um, Sea Fleet resides, then you may see more of more of a push towards that. I was with President Shakashvili of Georgia, who said, "Watch out for that. That's what Russia did to Georgia. They took the easternmost provinces." Yeah. You could see a situation where they want to take the Crimea. There is another story out there on the in the Washington Times. They're touting it as an exclusive. I know Fox News has picked up on it some mm -hmm. this morning. That says that the FBI had a source that was in contact with Osama bin Laden as early as 1993, and that they knew that there were cells operating in the United States at that time. Well, if that's the case, they sure didn't do a very good job of protecting no, it. No, they didn't. Um, and so I, I wonder, you know, I, I, I think the Washington Times is a terrific um, paper, online paper, but I, I want to, I really want to learn a little bit more about this, because if there was somebody on the inside, why didn't we take advantage of him? Why didn't we listen to him? If that was the case, that we all kind of looked the other way and it fell between the cracks, I want to know why. And one of the questions that's being raised this morning is why is that, wasn't that not brought to the 9-11 Commission? Right. Yeah. And why are we just hearing about it now, yeah. right 30 there. years later? All right, KT, listen, thank you so much. We're going to cut it a little short today because we have this uh, weather situation ongoing right now. But thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.